Cheech Marin and Tommy Chong turned their 70s counterculture comedy into a string of fan favorite movies and hit albums. While Cheech has a new memoir out titled Cheech is not my real name, but don't call me Chong. Cheech, good to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, so it's already in the title there, Don't Call Me Chong. Yeah. What is your relationship these days with Tommy Chong? Uh, pretty good. We're on tour. We will go out and, and do casinos. Thank God for casinos. <laughs> There's more Indians casinos now than there were Indians when Columbus landed, you know. So, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's fine. We, we, get, we get along great on stage. You always have, you know. But there was a time where it didn't seem like things were as great, right? There was right? a time. <laughs> there was a time. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, you know, you, I, you know, I think it's with all acts. You're together 24-7, seven, seven days a week for however many years, and you're just getting sick of each other, you know? Was oh. it that, or was there some jealousy involved? Because, I mean, you were booking a lot of things, and you yeah. see your career seemed to be going, yeah. and Tommy seemed to be a little bit stuck. It's well, you know, people get to the place that they want to get to, or they, they deem that's where it's supposed to be, and they, they stay there, and I kind of wanted to keep going in other directions, so there we go. What's the longest you went without communicating with each other? Oh, boy, I don't know, years. Years, but years. We, we, we always would communicate with each other somewhere along the line. I'd call him, and when we got together again, it was like we never left, and then, yeah. You called him a megalomaniac, yeah. though, at one point, and he said to us, when Cheech called me a megalomaniac, I thanked him for the compliment because I do believe I am God, and so take full responsibility for the success of Cheech and Chong. I look forward to Cheech becoming more popular because of his book, which will help my bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Logic, you know, <laughs> what can I say, you know? Yeah. Uh, you're, you have the personality that you have. And some, I mean, Tommy always had a healthy ego, uh, you mm -hmm. know, before, what, before I met him. So it kind of, with success, that kind of grows. And, and when you're working in a team, I mean, there has to be a certain balance there at all times, or else the team doesn't work. It gets That's out true. of balance. Take, take us back to the beginning when you met him, though. So you met him at, he, he owned a strip club. Yeah. And the initial meeting. What do you first remember about meeting him? I remember looking at him saying, what are you? Are you <laughs> Mongolian biker? Or, you know, it was like weird because he was, he's half Chinese, half English, Irish, and Canadian with long haired hippie and like, uh -huh. and we, uh, those days, and he looked at me and he'd never seen a Chicano before. He didn't, and he, he was thinking the same thing. What are you? <laughs> so that's what we get along, I think. And you guys linked up because you thought you were going to be singers, right? Oh, well, no, we, well, I was a singer uh, yeah. all my life. And he was a musician all his life from, and played with, in Motown with uh, mm -hmm. his band. And, and uh, so that was kind of our bond. We always approached uh, uh, comedy as music. Had a certain rhythm to it, you know, had a certain beat. You knew when to come in, when to not come in. And, mm -hmm. and so we related to each other on that term. But when did it go from that to comedy and becoming a comedy act? Well, Tommy had been on the road with his, his, his Motown band, and he had seen improvisational theater like Second City, The Committee in San Francisco, and he decided that's what he wanted to do. So when the band broke up, he went back to Vancouver, where he's from, and, uh, and, and, and his, his parents had turned his nightclub into Vancouver's first strip club. But it wasn't like, like you think of a strip club now, it's not a gentleman's club, you know. It was like the worst part of town. <laughs> I mean, it was a skid Wasn't it junk, nude you know? improv? <laughs> well, that's what he's instituted this improv theater, but with topless girls. And it was, it was great. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, I'm getting paid for this, okay. You know? And it was, and, but what I figured out at the end what it was was uh, 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 hippie burlesque. That's oh. what it was, classic burlesque but with hippies in it you know so a lot of drug jokes and culture jokes and stuff like that so it would go along great the second title of the book is don't call me chong do yeah, you get yeah. called chong all the all time th really all the, which one are you ching or chang <laughs> you know it's like all the time <laughs> does he get called cheech oh yeah, oh, yeah. and pig people get pissed off when he doesn't speak spanish <laughs> uh, yeah. okay man that's okay it's kind of false. Is it true you almost became a priest? Don't answer that. We're going to ask the question when we come right back. More with Cheech straight ahead.